So the, the interesting part is some of the things that Kathy's already touched on, but it's really, I mean, it's the human element and the community element, and it's, I mean, you're, you're doing arts um, for art's sake and for your, to make Orlando a better place, and it's totally a quality of life sort of play. Um, and I think that uh, being able to design a performing arts center now and build one now is um, fun because there are a lot of the, a lot of them are older institutions, and we've learned a lot from a lot of people's mistakes. And so, um, the and the way we think about arts for everyone, arts <coughs> for every life, is what we say, is a, um, is totally a different vision of of Lincoln Center. Lincoln Center is a is for the wealthy, and is they're trying to fix it now, but it was built. It's very exclusionary, uh, and you essentially. Unless you were the one percent who could afford to go there, you never went. It was in. a fortress. It didn't matter to you. It was a fortress, and so we're trying to be the opposite of that. And um, there's uh, there's something like three something million people in uh, metropolitan Orlando, and um, if we knock it out of the park, there's going to be five hundred thousand people come to the art center every year, and some of those are repeat visitors. So I mean, let's be realistic about the amount of people that can go inside a performing arts center, even if you're sold out every night, and it's one or two percent of the population. So um, you don't do it just to get people in the door. You do it for it to matter to the community and for it to be about education and to be about the public space and all those things. So that's really the fun part, I think, in some ways, is we understand that and we've had that commitment from day one. So some sort of run through the programming, but don't focus. I mean, tell us what the obvious are. The ob Broadway is the most obvious thing. That's a moneymaker. So tell us what that is, but then sort of dovetail that into the education part and the outdoor space part of it because right. we really do have a very right. total plan. So what, what Craig's actually talking about is the institution. What is the programming of the institution? So <clears throat> it's as if, um, you know, St. Jude's Children's Hospital began 50 years ago and uh, somebody sat down at a table and said we ought to be the world's leader in children's research for health care and they stayed the course. What our group sat down and said is, how do we, how do we break down the barriers for elitism uh, for the art to make this relevant for everybody? It doesn't matter where you come from, from an uh, economic perspective or uh, ethnicity. You have the chance to love opera. It doesn't matter where you came from. Or you can be someone that's remarkably wealthy and you might love hip hop or country. That's all relevant. But you have to create a place where everybody feels comfortable in doing that. So the, what the programming is, and, and, and that's the, that probably is one of our biggest opportunities here as this room and our uh, circle and our host committees and those that are helping us is we have to teach Central Florida how to belong to an art center. We don't have an art center. We have an auditorium, a hall, that uh, we don't, there's not a staff there that is understanding and studying our market to understand what type of content and performing arts is relevant to you and are where you may have an interest. So we have a programming team and a marketing team that is really doing uh, immense market research to understand what is that. We have a big Hispanic population, but that doesn't mean that they're going to come to the performing arts. And that doesn't mean they're all from the same fabric of a Latin community. So what is that? And that's not because we're doing it for the Latin community. We're might doing it for the entire Orlando community as appreciation for where our community's headed. So that programming team's in place to put a series on, uh, inaugural season on, Broadway's part of that. We actually, when uh, Mayor Jacobs said, listen, uh, I want to really support the project with another gift, we, this is a, just a really quick story, but it's relevant to programming. Uh, a family called us up, a husband and wife said, we'd love to come talk to you. We said, terrific, come on in. They said, you know, we love jazz, and we just moved back to Orlando. We, had the, we were fortunate to be able to retire in our late 50s. Uh, we've lived in Australia, Ohio, and Philly, and uh, we chose Lake Mary. And we love jazz, and the jazz community here is really deep, and we knew that, but we don't know how deep. And jazz is very broad. So we're studying that, we've been studying that, and we started talking about this, and he said, you know what, I really want to get involved. He left, wrote us a, a very significant check, and he said, I would like to sponsor your first season of jazz performances. So we don't have a venue here that's putting on a jazz series. It's the nonprofit's responsibility to raise those funds to offset that, to make affordable uh, pricing for that, and a diverse uh, program. And so jazz, there'll be a jazz series our first inaugural season, along with um, uh, Broadway, along with comedy. Uh, we're also going to be working very closely with the Orlando uh, Philharmonic, 
the Orlando Ballet were working on uh, and really dreaming about how Mad Cow could uh, expand their program into our facility. So it's not just external work coming here, it's really exploring of how we can really provide another uh, threshold for, uh, you know, for the local arts organizations too.